customers are really the heart and soul of uh, everything that comes to business today. Um, we know that customer experience has been transformed, especially in times of this current pandemic. There's a lot of uncertainty and technology really has come to the forefront of ensuring that customer experience can be what they expect in ways that we probably never imagined before. Uh, we know that everyone is adopting social distancing. E-commerce has become one of the ways that we purchase everything, even here in Kenya. Uh, we see a work from home trend where, you know, for the last eight months or so, people are not actually sitting in their offices and in increasingly using digital platforms. To do this effectively, you'll see that, for instance, purposeful leadership is important uh, because you need to have a clear, consistent and compelling vision about what customer experience should be across digital channels. Uh, employees are also very much a part of this process, making sure that we can elevate the customer experience uh, for digital uh, experiences and also looking at customer connectedness where we can look at customer perspectives and understanding how we work and deliver the best value propositions to them via digital platforms. At this point, I would like us to introduce our panel. Uh, I think it's an incredibly uh, uh, capable panel that is going to take us through this topic around looking at digital leadership and the next radical change in customer experience. Uh, we have with us Ian Jensen van Rensburg, who's the VMware Lead Technologies and also the Senior SE Manager. Welcome, Ian. Uh, we also yeah. have uh, Martin Mirero, the CEO of Duma Kenya. Karibu. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we have Winnie Sergan, who's the CIO of Boresha Sako. And lastly, we have Anita Chege, uh, heading the digital transformation at the HF Group. Karibu sana. Thank you. So as we always say, ladies first. So Anita, I would like to give you the pleasure of giving us the, the first uh, comments uh, around this particular topic. So you're heading up digital transformation, something that I think uh, COVID has accelerated across the board globally and even here in Kenya. Uh, you're doing so at HF Group, where I believe you're having many initiatives that are taking advantage of transformation. I'm sure you're a very, very, very busy person at this point in time. So my question to you is, what sort of initiatives are you undertaking to transform the customer experience at HF Group? How are you ensuring that the broader leadership team across the board within your organization is sort of cognizant of these changes and equipping them to be digital first in the way that you're engaging customers as an organization. All right, thank you so much for, for that question. Forgive the background noise. Uh, I had to rush out of the house because of no power problem. issues, hence where I'm sitting today. Yeah. Uh, but to your question, one of the key initiatives that we continue to drive at HF uh, is the round data. Uh, so we, we're doing a lot of uh, uh, projects around uh, data assimilation from the different sources we have, uh, both uh, structured data and unstructured data. So we have a lot of projects, especially that have been, um, of course, uh, because of the COVID issue and also different initiatives that we had in the, in the, in the past have been really uh, brought to the forefront uh, this, this particular year. right? Um, so in regards to leadership, um, how am I working with the leadership just to sensitize them on the, of the need of these particular initiatives? Uh, one of the things I really appreciate our leadership is that they're very tech savvy. Um, they appreciate the, 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 the good that comes with the new technologies that are emerging now. Therefore, a lot of these uh, initiatives that we, we, we come up with from a technology perspective are very easily adopted by, by the leadership. So we have a lot of uh, forums where we talk about uh, these emerging technologies, what are the banks uh, and financial institutions are doing in regards to these emerging technologies, uh, and more specific customer experience, and that uh, uh, we, we, of course... Uh, um, hello? Hello, we can hear you. Sorry. Yes. So around customer experience, our leadership is very aware of all the benefits that we have around our projects to do with data analytics, as well as our projects that are steered towards customer experience. William, how are the customers responding? How are they taking up these new approaches? So the best thing about but they're, they're, they're really not aware, per se, uh, in terms of what is happening on the background. Uh, so how they are aware about how they experience the uh, product then is what um, uh, tells us whether our initiatives are really uh, catering to their needs at that point. So therefore, we've, we've seen a lot of uptake in regards to uh, the different use cases we have on our digital channels around payments. Uh, so during the COVID season, we've been able to 
to increase in terms of uh, volume and also the just the transaction value that have been going through our digital channels, especially during this uh, COVID session season. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much, uh, Martin. Um, Glad to have you here. Uh, I think we are all your customers, so to speak. Uh, we're always using the various services available in Duma, so it's a pleasure to have you here. And I think the perspective is a little bit different because you're representing you know, government services or uh, I think it's G2C, you're engaging with customers uh, from that point of view or G G government to citizens. And services are increasingly going online, you know, all these things like immigration and all obviously had to be um, realigned to our current pandemic reality. So from your perspective, I'd be very keen to understand how you went through that transition, how you're delivering better citizen service across the board, and more importantly, you know, in the last eight months, what are you seeing in terms of sort of the evolution or the transformation of how customer experience has been, um, I suppose, changed uh, due to this pandemic? Uh, yeah, yeah, morning, morning. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, so, so, so of course, it's, uh, it's, it's been a very disruptive period, uh, you know, not least for government. Um, yeah, the public service I know is perceived to be, you know, a pretty large and uh, slow-moving entity. Um, but I have been, been fairly impressed, at least from my perspective, with the the, the deliberate sort of um, um, actions that have been taken to, you know, to drive structural and behavioral adjustments for for this time, uh, especially the last eight months, as you mentioned. So, so there's um, so so there's even uh, the language around bold and you know radical initiatives, you know, as opposed to the more the more um, evolutionary changes that have traditionally been um, so, sort of like the, the 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 approach in government. Yeah. So so there's there's movement around you know new priorities, of course, for accelerating the availability of these services, uh, you know, digital services to our primary constituents, the citizens, mm -hmm. uh, but also, um, yeah, uh, the, the, there's also a re, re, um, reorientation of some of the, um, some of the, the initiatives that, uh, that we need to take up to ensure citizens are served in a, you know, safe and uh, in an environment where their safe and well-being is safety, health is, is also protected. So, so, so close a home like a Tunduma Kenya, um, you know, which, you know, as 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 uh, maybe you might know, provides uh, sort of a supermarket for government services. Um, there's there's obviously a big push to 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 take these services online. We've recognised uh, the leadership is actually um, you know leading from the front. Uh, prioritizing budgets to provide sort of something we're calling the Huduma Popote, which means service anytime, anywhere, which is primarily over digital channels. Um, with regard to uh, the thing I mentioned about uh, try, trying to ensure safe access to services in our physical channels, um, like you know the, the, the Huduma centers, we've introduced service by appointment which is a um, service that allows you to book a slot within a Kuduma center of your choice and, and, and then present yourself at that time and to be served without having to join a queue. And, and there's been fairly good reception of that in the public. And, and it's something we're hoping to, to, to scale out to, to all our other service points. Yeah, so so there, is, there is that recognition. I mean, it's, the road is long, for sure. Uh, it will take a, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, reorientation, um, you know, going forward. Uh, and uh, but, but we believe that there is space now and uh, the right amount of attention that's been given to the role of technology in, in helping deliver better services. Thank you so much, Martin. I think that's really illustrative of, you know, just how transformation can really move forward aggressively, even yeah. in a government organization where some might think uh, this is something that could take long. But I'm really actually impressed personally that uh, Huduma has really uh, had to adopt and adapt uh, these new approaches to remain uh, relevant and also be able to serve customers in unique ways that weren't possible before. Uh, Winnie, Karibu Sana, thank you for joining us today. Uh, you are the CIO at one of the largest um, cooperatives in the country. 
And I'd like to understand maybe from your perspective as a, as a, as a SACO and what you do there, you know, how are you digitally enabling uh, the customer experience and how things possibly changed in the last eight months during this particular pandemic? Thank you so much. And I'm glad to join the forum this uh, morning to be able to discuss how the digital transformation has been in the SACO industry. The SACO is an industry that serves members and it's one of the reserved financial institutions when it comes to digital adoptions. There was a poll doing rounds on social media that what has actually made you transform? Is it the times, is it the trends or it's COVID-19? So um, the, the COVID-19 has really made us think of how best we can be able to give the customer experience and more so leveraging on technology. So for the circle, it has been a, hell, a skelter running around to look for that very best solution to be able to give the customer a good experience. And actually one of them which was in place and saw a very high uptake as Anita mentioned is that the uptake of the mobile banking technology doubled from same time last year, wow. meaning people realize the importance of technology better or had to embrace technology better with the, with the COVID-19. The other technology that we had to em embrace was uh, about the member onboarding app. Before we were going to the field, look for members, ask them to fill a form, ask them to give, to give us their ID, ask them to give us all the credentials that we need for KYC. But with COVID-19, this was made impossible and there was need to look for a way in which you can be able to attend to these members. The other thing that made us go to get the member onboarding up was also the wanting trends in the circle industry. Most of the people are aged, uh, 45 years and above, who are, participant, who are major participants and stakeholders in circles. So the only way we could also think of how best to uh, get hold of the youthful generation and the millennials was to get something that they're used to. We are all used to having the phones and the rest. So we work, uh, we worked with uh, Spin Mobile Technologies and currently we have a member onboarding app. Just download it on Google Play. Give us all your details, be it the email address, the photo you can even take in form of a selfie, the ID front and back you take in form of a photo. Hello. Winnie, I think we seem to have lost you. Are you there? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, the app can be able to help us engage with our members and be able to enroll more members who are useful into the society. So technology, the technology has really helped the circles to drive uh, to serve their members to give members the experience using a. Uh, online member portal whereby they can be able to check their statements and they can be able to interact and communicate back to the circle. So it's something that it has not reached the end. It's a work in progress and we are going to see how best we can be able to leverage and give customers a better experience as time goes by. Great. Thank you so much. It sounds Thank to you. me like uh, Voracia Sako has really um, sort of embraced and adapted. And it sounds like you're at the very beginning of the journey, but I'm loving the story about, you know, reaching out to youth, uh, being able to use mobile apps as a, as a primary channel, you know, that doubling of transactions, uh, same period of last year. So I really love the way that you know, it seems that Yosako and you know, generally has pretty much transformed how it's doing things. And, you know, the journey is only beginning. It's only going to get better. Uh, great. So, Ian, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure uh, to have you here. Thank you. Uh, and you're representing uh, VMware, a company that I've admired for many, many years, an international player um, around virtualization and all types of solutions for the enterprise. So from a digital leadership uh, perspective, um, uh, how are you driving uh, the whole transformation agenda where customer experience is concerned at VMware? And how are you looking at sort of this digitally led context that we now operate in uh, thanks to the current pandemic? Well, thanks for, for having me um, uh, on this panel. I uh, really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so from a VMware perspective, you know, I, I, I really want to start off with uh, just saying to the audience, um, you know, the, if there's any millennials uh, watching or Generation Z, which uh, I doubt, but uh, 
these these people are thought that they were the only ones that are what we call digitals. Uh, but I can guarantee you now, um, after the pandemic, during the pandemic, more people um, have become digitals now, and uh, everyone is starting to make use of uh, virtual platforms and also uh, um, a various type of applications what uh, they have not been using uh, in the past. Also, what we see from a VMware perspective, if we um, uh, interface with our customers, customers are really um, pushing very hard to uh, get an a easy to use, easy to understand, easy to implement VPN, um, uh, virtual private network, uh, software-defined uh, um, uh, WAN infrastructure for their, for their users so that the users can easily access applications because the application, um, as I call it, is the VIP in the room. We all use applications on a daily basis, but it's about how easily you can access those applications and how secure the, um, you can access those applications. So when we look at uh, what our customers are currently uh, busy with, specifically from a financial uh, sector perspective, is um, and what VMware is also providing uh, to those customers is definitely a multi-cloud strategy in order to make use of any cloud, uh, whether it is in your private uh, data center, whether it is in a mega cloud provider, it shouldn't really matter. We say that cloud is the new hardware. And um, if you can place a virtualization layer on top of hardware, you can put a virtualization layer on top of cloud. So whether it is a private cloud, public cloud, telco cloud, it shouldn't really matter where you run your infrastructure. But what's most important is you should be able to automate it, manage it, secure it as if it was running in your own private data center. Then the next thing you sh uh, we are uh, enabling our customers uh, to make use of any application, whether it is uh, traditional applications, which uh, their profitability and livelihood is still based on, or whether it is modern cloud native applications. Uh, we assist customers to run both infrastructures, both type of applications in the same uh, um, fashion. And then also any device, any workplace, and working from anywhere is really what is important. Enabling customers to work from anywhere securely, and what's most important is not to have difficulty doing it. Well, thank you so much, Ian, for those insights. I'm a big, big fan of the cloud. You know, we as an organization have worked from home for eight months. Everything is in the cloud, and that's how it works. So glad to hear that VMware is really looking at how to create those different scenarios to ensure that you know work is not a place you go to, but a thing you do wherever you are. Um, so I'd like to kind of maybe uh, look at a last round of questions just to understand a little bit more around maybe the risks and the things that can go wrong, right? Because you are leading your organizations into some of these new spaces and this new brave world of enhancing customer experience across digital platforms. So maybe starting again with you, Anita, what are some of the pitfalls and the things that you've seen that could or have gone wrong when making this transition towards uh, this you know, sort of digitally led customer experience uh, that every organization now has to contend with? All right, so I think the, the major pitfalls is around um, just adoption. Adoption of the right technology, adoption of the you know, the right skills to run this kind of business. So you find digital business is very different from uh, the normal, uh, and coming speaking from a financial institution is very different from traditional banking. Um, and digital is not, digital business is not really led by technology, but by business models that support the technology. So one of the pitfalls that I see um, with regard to just adoption uh, of digital um, uh, to deliver customer experiences around uh, the technology that supports that uh, the, the different uh, customer experience issues. Uh, because you find a lot of uh, FSI players um, struggle with a lot of monolithic kind of uh, technology stacks. So the co-banking systems are very dated, um, therefore they don't uh, employ things like technology like microservices, 
um, and also in terms of regulation, we have a lot of regulation around running our co-working systems on, on the cloud. So if you look at that, then uh, delivering on these digital uh, propositions for our customers becomes very difficult. Um, you find that a lot of the experiences that we deliver for our customers have to be agile enough in terms of responding to customer requirements and be uh, providing personalized uh, based on the kind of customer you have. So you have to be able to personalize Anita's customer experience, Martin's customer experience. And for that, then the technology that is underlying has to be agile enough for that kind of um, you know, agility. And if you look at a lot of the front runners, and I, I like to refer to the challenger banks, especially in Europe, uh, where they are, they are very good in terms of uh, the technology. And if you look at uh, cases like uh, Netflix, Spotify, I, I'm sure you've never seen an upgrade of Netflix, you know, but they're able to uh, make changes very seamlessly for their customers. They're able to personalize experiences for their customers depending on uh, your interest, uh, etc. Uh, but that is really supported by the uh, the, 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 the backend technology. Okay. So I think this is one of the pitfalls that a lot of us have to uh, overcome to be able to deliver the, the, the right customer experience in this digital age. Well, thank you. So I think yeah, that customization and creating that elegant uh, user experience where everything just works seamlessly. Uh, I'm getting the hurry up here that we're a bit pressed for time. So I'm going to just uh, move on to Martin. Uh, within 10, 15, 20 seconds, can you tell us what do you think the considerations and pitfalls are? Thank, you, thanks. Thanks. So, okay. so, so, yeah. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so very quickly, I think um, you know, just to, to echo some of the things Anita mentioned, um, um, is, is is this transition from um, you know systems of record, you know, the legacy systems uh, traditionally had, uh, even in government, to, to systems of engagement. You know, where 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 you know you need more flexible, engaging, interactive experiences for uh, your primary customers. And I think that transaction, that transition presents a big challenge. I mean, for us in government, one of the key uh, challenges is skills and capabilities uh, to, 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 to build this. But I think that also creates opportunities for partnerships with private sector, um, you know, around this area. Um, I mean, I, I think overall, one of the main challenges will also be to, to educate the uh, to make the digital service so that, you know, we can create that cognitive capacity within, uh, you know, the decision makers on, um, you know, that, that will then provide support for, for, for many of these initiatives. Thank Thanks. you so much, Martin. We're really out of time, so apologies for that. Uh, Winnie, literally in a few words, challenges, considerations, uh, and then Ian also, you can give us the same very briefly, very quickly, and then we can wrap up the session. Okay. The pitfalls, I would say, uh, I've experienced on this is things to do with uh, getting the user requirements right, transferring these user requirements to the vendors that you are working with, and ensuring that uh, the change, the res resistance to change when it comes to the adoption of the new uh, system is is not there, is seamless. So uh, most of the things is matching matching up with what you you ex matching up the expectation with the deliverable. Just aligning the Thank two you. parties. Uh, okay. And then lastly, Ian, um, very briefly, any thoughts around considerations, challenges, and pitfalls? Uh, definitely. Uh, very, very brief. Um, ultimately, the technology is there. Um, we can make use of the technology, and we can embrace the technology. One of the biggest pitfalls is the human component, how we survive in this digital world with the quick change um, of online constantly and how we actually if we're not seeing each other the whites of each other's eyes and not interfacing doing the handshake how your mental capability is going to move forward i'll leave you with that thank you so much uh, ian so ian uh, martin uh, winnie and anita thank you so much for your contributions I'm sure as the audience, you found this extremely useful and engaging. Um, and panel, I'm so grateful for your contributions uh, to making this an uh, exceptional uh, conversation really around how the customer experience is evolving from a digital perspective. Thank you so much.